Hello, let's solve more exercises related to time value of money. In this exercise, uh, we have a special case where the interest rate changes at each period. It's not constant as the exercises that we used to work with. Uh, here you made uh, a, a deposit of $200 four years from now. This is now, this is the present. And you made an X amount three years ago. Uh, you made uh, a deposit of $300 the last year, okay? So these amounts uh, happened in the past with respect to our uh, present value now. And I need to calculate uh, the amount of X knowing that now at period zero, I'm going to make a withdrawal of $1,000, which will be equivalent to all these deposits that I made. Now, with exercises like this, we have to uh, go uh, through periods, uh, one period at a time. Uh, so, if I want to get the equivalence of this 200, in the future of it lying at year 3, I'm going to use this interest rate. When I get the equivalence uh, at this period, I'm going to uh, get its equivalent in the next period. Next period is 2, period 2, not this one. Even if I have no uh, deposit at this year, this is still my uh, future value of this equivalent amount that I have here. So I have to stop at each year because there is a different interest rate uh, here. So you cannot do it in one step from year three to year one, which interest rate will, be you, will, will you use? So that's why you move from period three to period two at 8%, from year two to year one at 12%, from year one uh, to year zero at 15%. Let's see the solution step by step. So I will be uh, beginning with this uh, initial deposit four years ago of the amount of 200. When I want to get its equivalent uh, at year three, so I'm moving uh, this amount to the future. So I'm going to apply the equation related to future. So the future at period minus three, meaning that this is the future three years ago regarding uh, the amount that took place four years ago. F equals P, which is 200, into F knowing P, uh, 6% because this is the interest rate here, 6%. And we are moving uh, this amount or getting its equivalent, uh, which is far away by one period, so n equals to 1. Now we are standing here at period 3. Okay, so I got uh, the future value of this amount and its equivalent at this year. What else do we have at year 3? We have this amount x. Okay, so it just because it's located at period 3, you can say, uh, plus x right away. So this is the equivalence of uh, the deposit and the x amount at year 3. Now, uh, when I'm standing here uh, at period 3 and I want to get the equivalence at year 2. So this will become uh, present and I'm getting its equivalence in the future at 2. So the future at 2, again, F at 2, is the present at 2, the one that I got its equivalence from the previous step. Uh, and I want to calculate using the equation, so F equals P into F knowing P, I, N. Okay, what's the interest rate when I want to move things from year 3 to year 2? It's 8%. And how far are these periods from each uh, another? It's far away by one period. So I will have to multiply it by F knowing P, 8% and 1. And this is the value of the present, which is I got the value that I got from the previous period. I just put it here, multiply it with the new factor. Now, do I have any deposit taking place at year 2? So nothing. So that's why I added this 0 plus 0. So the final answer or the equivalence at year 2 is this amount, including x. So I'm standing here, and I got my equivalence. I will have to get the equivalence of this amount at year 2, move it to year 1 at interest rate of 12%. So let's see the answer. Okay, so uh, I'm standing here, so I previously calculated the future at year 2. Now, 
because I want to get the equivalent at year one. So this becomes the present value and I want to get its future. Okay, so the future at year uh, one uh, will be uh, the present from the previous period, which is this amount. Okay, I'll put it just as it is. So I will say F equals P into F knowing PI. What is the interest rate used from uh, period uh, two to period one? It is this 12%. So I put a 12 far away by one period. In addition to the amount that I already have at year one, which is the 300, so I say plus 300. This is the final answer or the, the equivalent value of all the things that happened here, but at year two. I'm getting the equivalence at year two. I still have one step, which is to get the equivalence at year zero now. So F equals to P. What is P again? It is the final answer of the previous step multiplied by F knowing P I N, where I is 15%. So this is the final answer. Now I got uh, the equivalence of all these payments at zero, but these are th uh, deposits in terms of X. Okay, and we agree that whatever we deposit will be equivalent to what uh, we will be able to withdraw. So I equate uh, the value of F equals to 1000 to the amount that I got here in order to get the value of X. So X will be $259. So this is uh, the method that we use when we have uh, different interest rates at each period. So we will have to go through it step by step. Um, let's uh, see now another exercise. Here in this exercise, uh, I will be asking about the interest portion and the principal portion. Suppose that you took a loan and you are uh, returning uh, the uh, uh, the amount at the end of each year, okay, of this uh, loan plus the interest. So when you are, uh, the, the amount that you are uh, paying uh, represents, part of it represents uh, the interest and parts of it is uh, paying back uh, the loan uh, that you already took. Here I just want to see what is exactly the interest portion and how much are you actually uh, paying back the principal amount out of this uh, amount or the annuity that you are paying. So in exercises like this, you will be given uh, the principal amount, the loan principal amount, the amount that you borrowed initially, interest rate, and the duration of the loan, uh, sorry, duration of the loan, which is three years. And I will be asking uh, you to fill the whole table and uh, answer uh, a certain question at the end. Here I'm asking what percentage of the principal portion was paid at the end of year three. So I want to get this value in the table. Now, how do we proceed with the solution of this exercise? Uh, the first step will be calculating the annuity, the annual amount that you will be paying each year, okay? So how do I get it? Using the equation A equals to P, the principal amount of money that you took at the present. Uh, A equals P into A knowing P, I, the 10%, and 3 years. You get this value from the table uh, so that you can tell that the annuity is $6,032. So this is the amount that you're going to pay at the end of each year. Now I need to know how much of this amount is interest and how much of this amount is paying back uh, the principal amount or the initial loan that you got. I know that uh, the remaining balance, or uh, this is originally uh, the loan that you took, you took $15,000, and you will be paying or returning it in these amounts. I just want to split what part is interest and what part is returning uh, the principal portion. So the next step will be uh, working uh, with this column, okay? I want to calculate the interest interest portion. Now, uh, the loan that you took was $15,000, all right? And you will be paying 10%, okay? So what's the 10% of the 15,000? 15,000 times 10%, it is 1,500. So this is the interest that you were paying 
on the loan that you took at the end of the first year. But at the end of year one, you paid in total 6032 and I know that 1500 is interest. So what is uh, the principal portion? So you just say 6000 minus 1500. Okay, it's 4532. So this is the amount that you are actually uh, paying back to cover the initial loan that you, that you took. And this is completely an interest paid to the bank. So now you want to see what is the remaining balance. You took 15,000, you repaid 4,532 out of this amount. So you will say this amount minus this amount, this will be the new remaining balance. So you owe at the end of the first year this amount. So when you want to apply the interest on this amount, you will say this amount times 10%. So this is the new interest that you will be paying at the end of year two. It is $1,046. Don't forget that at the end of year two, this is the total amount that you will be paying. Uh, one out of which uh, this amount is interest and the rest, the 6,000 minus 1,046. So you see, it is this amount, it is what you are uh, paying back from the loan or from the remaining balance. So what will be the new remaining balance? It will be this amount minus this amount that you paid from the principal portion. So what's left is this amount. This is your remaining balance. So you will be paying the 10% over this remaining balance. So this amount times 10%. It is $548.3. This is the interest that you will be the interest portion that you will be paying at the end of year three out of the total annuity. So this amount minus this amount. This is the um, principal portion at year three. So you see that you uh, you will find that this amount and this amount are equal uh, because when you pay this amount you will be paying uh, the last part of your balance so the last step here must be always zero because here I'm just uh, showing you when you take a loan uh, what will be the payments each year and how do we um, split or uh, seeing what part is interest and what part is uh, paying the principal amount so at the end you will have to have zero remaining balance because you already paid uh, the loan completely plus the interest. Now, this is how we fill the table step by step. But uh, I was asking a question, which, which is what percentage of the principal portion was paid by the end uh, of year three? Now, I might ask you uh, two questions. What percentage of the principal portion was paid at any of these years or what percentage of the interest portion was paid at any of these years? Here I asked what percentage of the principal was paid at the end of year three. So this is year three. So I know that I paid in total 6032 and I paid uh, 548 as interest and 5,483.7 as uh, returning the principal portion. So what is this percentage out of the total? So the answer is 5,483.7 divided by 6,032. This will give me 90.9%. Now, if I asked you, let's say, what percentage of interest was paid at the end of year two. So you will be looking at numbers related to year two, looking at the interest portion, this amount. What percentage is this amount out of the total? So you will be saying 1,046.8 over 6,032. So um, uh, this, these are the questions uh, that come related to this table. And the objective of it just to see or to show you that when you uh, get a loan of $15,000 and you agree to pay 10%, so you will be paying uh, almost $18,000. So just to show you how much are you paying interest. 
So in total, you will be paying $3,000 as interest and you will be returning the initial amount that you took. So you'll pay the $15,000 whole plus the interest of $3,000. And uh, here you can see at each period what portion is related to the interest and what portion is related to the principal amount. Uh, thank you for listening.